So the room that people both start and leave in <laughs> uh, here when they get here is our social room. And uh, the idea of this originally, because we are storefront, uh, we originally thought, well, maybe what we need to do is to make this sort of like a coffee shop. And we'll have this idea that people gather in coffee shops and have conversation and things like that, which we think is a wonderful way to uh, build community. But as we thought about it for our purpose here, we thought, well, coffee shops, people sit around little tables and they only talk in tiny groups. And what we were really hoping for is to have a bigger sense of community and congregation. And so we designed this to be like a person's kitchen. So like when you have a dinner party and you invite everybody over, everyone gathers around the big islands and talks. And so we have this island that's on rollers so it can go in and out. Uh, but we more or less have it here um, so that at every one of our events, uh, we'll have healthy snacks um, and people can just uh, sit around and visit and also a lot of cases, some of our activities, you know, we will have been uh, talking about life important issues. So philosophy and theology and um, just practical things for how do you live life, in, uh, the good life or meaningful life. And um, you find that that then gets people to want to, you know, continue those discussions on uh, a one-on-one -on -one or small groups and things like that. And so this is actually, we found out, worked way too well. <laughs> So, you know, in the old uh, church, people maybe have for snacks, they might, you know, kind of take off after 15 or 20 minutes or something like that. Now we can have people um, on a Tuesday, sometimes staying here till 1130 and things like that. So it can really, really go on. And it's wonderful um, uh, that that's been pretty successful. So we couldn't be happier with that. So one of the things um, that we decided also in this, this room, since um, for all of our activities, we tend to have new people who've never come to a Community of Christ uh, church at all before. So they've even either come for the meditation group or for our history, theology, philosophy group, or for one of our other kinds of programs. Um, and so we're having these uh, talk about life issues and things like that around the snacks. Uh, and so then we want to be able to answer, what is this church about? What do we stand for? What are, what are our, what's our mission? What are our principles? And so we created um, a poster uh, with icons to kind of uh, be able to memorize and remember the enduring principles and uphold the enduring principles. Uh, and so the World Church then took the poster and has worked with it and, and brought it into design. And so the poster is now out of date because there's actually is art um, official icons. Uh, but anyway, we already have this one printed, so we'll probably keep it, <laughs> but there's, there's new ones. Uh, and likewise, uh, the mission. What we did here was, and you can, people can see probably immediately that it's a little different from how the World Church Mission Initiatives are, but as a congregation, uh, what we wanted to do was to take jargon language and translate it into the vernacular um, that we find in the streets of downtown Toronto where a majority of the people are completely unchurched. You know, so people who may not have any Christian background, a lot of the people who, we've had people who come and participate in our activities who are from the background where they're Muslim or Shinto and Hindu and Buddhist, um, Jewish, atheist, of course. And so um, what we wanted to be able to do was to translate that into a vernacular and to um, make that immediately accessible to people. Um, but we have maintained all the distinctives, but that's just how we've done it here for the purposes of invitation. Uh, from the welcome room, um, we have a little bit of a hallway, um, which even though it's uh, just a little hallway, <laughs> we wanted to model it on the worshiper's path uh, in the temple. And so that same idea as you're going from the outer into the actual very uh, special sanctuary, the idea is you pass through the gates, the gates uh, have the have the etched glass that represents the sacred grove in Palmyra. There's immediately the picture of the burning bush and so on, stages up and through the temple. And so in that same way, um, we have these pictures here uh, that represent the old covenant, the new covenant, the restored covenant. So we have Sinai, uh, where Moses is communing with the divine. Uh, we have the shore of the Sea of Galilee, where Christ is calling the apostles to follow him. We have uh, the sacred grove in Palmyra, uh, in the restoration experience, so uh, Joseph's vision of Christ. And continuing on to kind of um, uh, follow in that same idea of the temple and the spiral that the temple has, and uh, just to get people thinking about that symbol. Uh, here, a you know, picture of a galaxy, 
picture of the Nautilus shell. So the spiral in as, the, as a metaphor for life's journey of uh, connection to the divine, the worshiper's path in both macrocosm and life and microcosm. And that come, brings you into the sanctuary. So the sanctuary, um, we knew that we wouldn't have any natural lighting. And one of the things that we had at the old Bathurst Street Church was just beautiful stained glass uh, lighting. And so we went um, and did some research and came up with a way to have a, um, this light wall, where again, um, centering on the church's historic peace seal, uh, and then taking again this, uh, the symbol of the spiral, but also with cross and radials in it. And this has the ability to do all sorts of different lighting effects. Actually, people wonder how this works. It's actually, if you look underneath here, the, these, are, these are holes, you know, and what's actually happening is the light is reflecting on a wall behind here. Um, let me turn the artwork lights on here. So back on the back here, um, again, we wanted to have this be about community of Christ identity formation, community of Christ distinctives. So in our sanctuary, we're referencing um, the three really important sacred spaces of the community of Christ tradition. So the original temple in Kirtland, uh, the auditorium where the World Conference comes together and discerns uh, for the whole denomination what God is calling us to do, and of course the sanctuary of the temple. We also have um, a primitivist painting here uh, done by a man named Hicks in Pennsylvania in the 19th century. And this is a painting of this vision of the peaceable kingdom from Isaiah. So the idea of the lion uh, lying down with the lamb and all the other animals and the child leading them. And it also has the um, imagery here. It's important to our story, I think, in our original ideals. The Quakers here meeting with the indigenous Americans. The idea of peace between peoples, too, on the American continent, uh, even if it has as complicated a history as the potential for actually lions and lambs lying down together. Um, the neat thing about this painting is this is the painting then that inspired the peace seal. So this was a very popular image um, in the 19th century and that they used that to create the peace seal. Um, on the ceiling, if you can see it, I don't know if you want to look up. And <laughs> so we um, wanted to have as much uh, space as we could, so we left the ceiling unfinished, even though um, people were nervous at that, what the look would that be like in a chapel. And then we put the wood slats there, um, hanging, hanging that way. That's reminiscent of the way the chapel in Bathurst Street was. There's a lot of cues that went into it where we want to maintain the familiar and bring what, what came before with us. And that's also true in the sacrament table, which communion table, which comes from Bathurst Street. We wanted to build, we use the screen in all of our, our different services, and we wanted to be able to build that into it so it didn't look like some strange thing is coming down and disrupting the worship service every time the screen up lowers and comes up. And so it's built in again with the line and, and that way. Um, the, we have the mission initiatives again built into the wall as a, a way to have that teaching mission and have mission ever before us. From the Christian heritage and Christian tradition, we picked uh, images of, these are stained glass windows from the medieval cathedral of Chartres and France, and they represent, on the one hand, the nativity story and the passion story. We just barely got new artwork in, and so I thought we might as well just open it up because I want to see it. <laughs> Been waiting for this to be printed. So what we've been doing with the art, uh, there's a wonderful um, digital printing process where you can print on stretched canvas. Uh, and so it looks just like a painting, uh, but it's not a painting. And it also doesn't, it's like treated so it won't fade in sunlight and things like that. So the last 70 years or something like that. And so that would be very nice. So this one, I've been pretty excited about getting. It's because um, when people come, they ask a lot about uh, the history of the congregation. And so um, the congregation is 126 years old. And a lot of times when you're in a facility that's kind of this modern, people don't assume that for a second. And so to tell even the congregation's story, we wanted to have kind of like a teaching tool. And so in the middle, uh, you know, we have the artwork of, the, of Center Place, uh, the current downtown facility of the church. But going back to our original building back in 1900 on Camden Street, a little drawing of that. Then we went to Soho Street, 
and we've retained the stained glass windows from the Soho Street building. Then in the 30s, we moved to the Bathurst Street building, which had a major renovation in the 1960s when they added the top sanctuary uh, and then they redid the facade and things like that. And so, um, anyway, so in bringing that all together, we wanted to be able to tell that story when people come in and ask us about where we came from. Another one that we have, I constantly, we have new people in the congregation come and visit us for our events every week. And as I'm trying to explain the, the denomination, I'm just constantly want a nice picture of the temple. And so we'll be able to explain and show that, uh, hang that one up. And so that we're pretty excited. You know, one of the things that um, has been true in churches for 2,000 years is that people use the artwork in order to actually teach you know, Christian distinctives, to teach message, to teach things that are important about your history, your heritage, and why we even meet together. And um, one of the things I do when I go around Community of Christ congregations, I always look around and I want to see what is it, what is, what is being told here about Community of Christ distinctives? How is, how is this facility that really is often the embodiment and incarnation of the church in the place, how is that building identity? How is that saying who we are? And so that's what we tried to do very deliberately here with all the artwork. So I'm very excited about this one. So this um, is a copy of a painting by David Hiram Smith. Uh, so the posthumous son of Joseph Smith Jr. and Emma's last, uh, anyway, he was the t their last son. Uh, he was an artist and a poet. And this is a picture of the Community of Christ properties in Nauvoo. And so after the exodus, after the destruction, after all the failures of Nauvoo, this is sort of the idyllic childhood that Joseph, um, I'm sorry, that David Hiram remembered, uh, you know, with the, the red brick store, which is one of the important places, the Nauvoo house uh, and other buildings that had survived. There's the mansion house, so the, all the Community of Christ properties. And so this will be a way, you know, to have a, a nice way to say where uh, we've come from and how we connect to our history. So uh, this, it's a little mess now that I've just opened up all of these paintings, but this room here is our um, heritage room and also office and conference room. And if you're having a little a board meeting or also um, where it has a bit of a different feel. We picked a different color palette. We wanted it to be warm and, um, and uh, feel like uh, you can, so we can close the doors, have do administration and things like that here. Um, one of the things that we've done here, we're like I mentioned, a 126 year old congregation and we brought with us our heritage. Uh, we're not in any way um, rejecting what went before or saying what, that we did anything wrong before. We wanted to take it all with us. And so one of the things that we did was we brought along our historic library, which we've also attempted to add to so that it can be a modern reference library. Specifically, our mandate here is that we're trying to be a repository for um, RLDS distinctives, the history of the church in Canada. Uh, and so we also have um, below, below the, all the old books and the new books, um, we have a whole bunch of archive uh, space where we've stored all of the old records. We're record keeping people. We have all of the um, manuscripts that go all the way back to uh, the 1890s where we kept all the record books. I keep getting these out, so I need to organize them better. We kept, for example, the um, stained glass windows from the Soho Street Church, so our second church. And these were uh, commissioned. Uh, they're a picture of Jesus healing um, Doing, performing a healing in the Gospel of Luke, but uh, they're commissioned in commemoration to an important faith healing that occurred over a century ago here in the congregation. And we also have the old seal, which we kept from the Bathurst Street uh, building. And then on this side over here, we have um, original paintings, uh, actually um, by a um, vernacular painter who in um, Salt Lake, she's done just a marvelous work her series, her first series that she did is called The Forgotten Wives of Joseph Smith. And so it is talking about um, this uncomfortable chapter in our history, uh, but wanting to, instead of focusing on Joseph Smith and focusing on all this kind of controversy and things like that, 
talk about the women's stories and recover those. And so it's uh, been a, a wonderful thing that she's done. And so for us, she painted though, um, an original painting of Emma and Joseph III. Um, we don't focus enough, I think, on, on this period of our history, but actually, if we go through um, Joseph III's memoirs and some of the wonderful biographies we have of him, we find out that he's actually a very thoughtful um, leader that has a lot of pragmatic and nice counsel that actually uh, is embedded really in our DNA in the, in the community of Christ, but also um, that we can look back to as, a, as wise counsel even today.